Hi Rose and welcome back to another video. Today I thought I'd have a little chat with you all about psychiatric hospitals and my inpatient experience with them. Um, I thought I'd share this because I get a lot of questions of what it's like to be hospitalised and whether it's really horrible, what the experience is like and I tend to say nah it's fine, like it really helped me a lot but when I say that I'm I'm definitely referring to my experience in Belgium and not necessarily the one that I had in Hungary and in Slovakia where I was in an actual psychiatric ward. If you want to know my experiences, then keep watching. My experience in hospital in Hungary is all a little bit vague. I was fairly young. And um, my psychologist actually accused me, that's not quite the right word, but my psychologist actually said that I was psychotic, so maybe it's logical that I don't remember all that much. Anyway, my experience in Slovakia is definitely, definitely very well ingrained into my memory, unfortunately, because the experience was pretty horrific. When I went into hospital in Slovakia, it wasn't just that I didn't understand the language and I couldn't communicate with anyone. It was also just the most horrific place that I've ever been. It was a general psychiatric ward, so having an eating disorder, I was also surrounded by other people that might have been suicidal or that might have had a variety of different mental and physical disorders. And it was quite tough. Not in the least because I couldn't communicate with anyone. In addition to this, the nurses were just horrible. Maybe it was stress, maybe they just didn't want to be there, maybe they were underpaid, maybe their lives sucked. But they weren't the nicest of people in general. There was definitely one nurse that I really liked that was really friendly to me, that tried to Google Translate, really tried to communicate with me, but all the other ones would ignore me and shout at the other kids. This was a daily occurrence. It was just scary how much shouting was going on. And mentally or physically ill or not, I don't think anyone, any children, should be shouted at, ever. So really, it was a bit of a traumatic experience, but also a reality check. This is what's going on in hospitals right now. There was one boy who was playing this classical music day in, day out, and it drove me mad. It also drove the nurses mad. In addition, there was just a lot of control. So obviously after a meal, I wasn't allowed to go to the bathroom. That sort of makes sense because with an eating disorder, there might be all sorts of compensation going on and you don't necessarily want people with an eating disorder using the restroom right after a meal. However, the bathrooms were always locked. So whenever anyone needed to go to the toilet, we had to ask. And then it was up to the nurse to decide if you actually got to go to the toilet. I remember one time when the meals that I was provided just weren't enough for me and I was still hungry and I was asking for more food and the nurse was telling me I will give you more food if and when I want to. This was obviously translated to me because I didn't understand a word of what she was saying. And it was horrible because I didn't get the food and I went to bed hungry and especially if you're in a ward for an eating disorder. That's not ideal. Really, it was just a power game. And it was quite distressing. And I felt really vulnerable and not in control of anything because even my bathroom breaks were being controlled for me. My meals were being controlled for me. How much time I could spend outside was being controlled for me. I felt trapped. I only had an hour's visit every day, but it also sort of overlapped with our break time, which meant that I had to eat my snack. And then oftentimes my actual hour of freedom was restricted because I didn't have that hour anymore. It might just have been 20 minutes or 30 minutes, which sucked. During this time also, I'd be locked in a little room my parents because I wasn't actually allowed to go outside and see the sunshine or do anything because they just didn't trust you. 
even during non-visiting times, the ward was always locked, two doors, both locked, so that we couldn't get out. There was big... There's big metal bars in front of the windows, so it really was like a prison experience. Even the meals, which were sort of unidentifiable, mushy things. Lots of strange meat and, yeah, just not very appetizing things. And I don't think during my time there I had a single vegetable, ever. I do want to say that is a massive contrast to Belgium where the meals were superb. I felt like I was in a hotel and I really felt like I had time to work on myself, improve myself and get better. But then again, that was specifically for eating disorders and I think Belgian hospitals in general are just a little bit better than Slovak ones. My opinion. You're welcome to disagree. Anyway, not only was the food disgusting, it also gave me food poisoning, but they didn't know what it was. So I had to go in isolation. I wasn't allowed to see anyone. All of my test results came back very negative and, you know, people were worried that I was going to die. So... Nevertheless, even in this horrible situation, I definitely do have some good memories. We had game nights, so I tried my best Slovak and played Twister with a whole bunch of others. There was movie nights, some more time to practice my Slovak, and there was definitely other patients that really would try to communicate with me and um, do activities with me, chat with me and keep me company. So even during difficult times like that, there's always people there that will put in the effort. I made some friends there and being in the same situation in a psych ward can really make some very deep bonds in a very short amount of time. Also, my parents came to visit me every single day and I'm so freaking thankful for that. There was an art room, so I got to have this creative outlet and, and when I left, I just felt so grateful to be back out in the community. In all honesty, I don't even know why I'm making this video, where I'm going with this video. It's just something that I've wanted to share and be open with. And I wanna drive home the message that if you have a therapist that you don't have a good connection with, if you think that this one hospital option is your only option, but it sucks, know that there's so many opportunities out there. I was living in Slovakia and I moved back to Belgium for three months to go into hospital there. And it is what I needed. I had a therapist that I was stuck with for several years. It didn't click. She was horrible to me. She made me cry every single session. But then I moved on and I got a different one and the experience was so much different, so much better for me. Know that if you're struggling in recovery, there's so many options available for you. There's so many things you can do and it's really important to put your recovery and your health first. Have you ever been hospitalized? And if so, what were your experiences? Were you in a sort of general psychiatric ward or maybe in a specific eating disorder ward? And how were you treated? How were other patients treated? And how were your experiences? Did it help you at all? Let me know below because I'm really curious to find out about other people's experiences. I hope my insights were somewhat valuable and I hope to see you soon for another video.